Hi friends, peace be with you. Welcome to Sunday Mass with Children. We are so glad that you can join us on this adventure to learn more about our faith. Thank you for sharing your amazing artwork with us week after week on Little Faith Steps. The entries from our local and international friends are colourful and encouraging. We are always inspired by the sharing and beautiful artwork. Keep them coming. Now, John, do you still remember what is the fruit of the Spirit? Let's see. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Excellent, John. This week, we are going to share about another fruit of the Spirit, goodness. The Bible tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, since God is good and we are made in the image and likeness of God, we can only be made with goodness, so we are good. Let us find out more in a while. Let's first begin with a prayer and a song to Jesus. Let us remember that we are in the Holy Presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for being so good and faithful to us. Holy Spirit, teach us to be good and faithful disciples of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There are more than 10,000 reasons to praise God who is so good and who has made us good. Now let's sing this song together.
God loves us so much that He made us with goodness and for goodness. I want you to say this with me. I am made with goodness and for goodness. I am made with goodness and for goodness. He wants us to always do what is right and holy. We can put goodness into action by being or doing our best in whatever we do, like being a good brother or sister, being a good friend, being a good student, or just doing our best in sports. In this way, we give glory to God for His goodness. But mom, sometimes when I want to do good, there's a voice that tells me to do something else. I end up doing this. Wow, I'm so hungry. Is there any food? Oh man, there's no food. John, can I have one please? Please, please. I'm no very, way! Very it's the last one in the box. Get your own. Instead of this. Dad, my favorite show is on right now. Can I only use the remote control and watch it? Okay. Please? Thank you, your best sister. Wow, I'm so hungry. Is there any food? John, can I have one please? Sure, take the whole thing. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Wow, thank you. You're such a good brother. Welcome. I know how you feel. Sometimes, I too get tempted to do things that are not good. If we do make wrong choices, we can always turn to Jesus to ask for forgiveness. We pick ourselves right back up and ask the Holy Spirit to teach us to be faithful to God. Faithfulness is another fruit of the Spirit. When we are faithful, we do what God asks of us and trust God to take care of us. Now, as we grow in the Spirit and remain faithful to God, we will learn to love the Lord with all our hearts and with all our souls, with all our minds and with all our strength, and to do what is good. So come, join us in singing Love the Lord Together. children, come join us when we sing, I will love you, you echo the words and actions, I will love you. When we sing, I will serve you, you echo, I will serve you. Are you ready? Let's do this together.
now listen to a story of a good and faithful man from the Bible. A long, long time ago, the earth was filled with people who fought a lot and didn't love each other. They did many things that made God very sad. But there was one good and righteous man. A huge flood was coming and God wanted to save this man and his family. God told him to build an ark big enough for his wife, three sons and their wives and a pair of every kind of animal. So the man built the ark. Just before the storm came, his family and all the animals gathered in the ark. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Finally, the rain stopped and the man and his family stepped out on dry land. God promised him that there will never again be a flood to destroy the earth. He sealed this promise with a rainbow in the sky. John, do you know who this man is? Oh, I know this story quite well. It's Noah. Yes, that's right. I wonder how Noah felt when God asked him to build an ark. I'm sure some people must have laughed at him for being so ridiculous in doing such a thing. Hmm. Noah must have felt really silly, but he put his faith in God. God was faithful to Noah, too, by keeping his promise to save Noah and his family from the flood. You're probably right. I wonder how Noah and his family felt when it rained so heavily for 40 days and nights. They must have felt afraid but still trusted in God because they believed that God won't let them down. That's right. We can learn so much from Noah to be good and faithful. He had faith in God and did what God wanted him to do even though it seems silly to the rest of the world. Faith is knowing and trusting that God will take care of us through the rough and tough times. Thank you kids for sharing. It's not always easy to be good and faithful. But if we think, see and hear good things, we will guard our hearts from evil. We will find it easier to be good and faithful to Jesus and our friends. Philippians 4 8 says, Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right and whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. All these good thoughts can only come from God who is good. Let's sing this song to fill our thoughts and minds with the goodness of God. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, think about such things. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, think about such things. If anything is excellent, if anything is praiseworthy, think about, think about, think about such things. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, think about such things. Think about such things. Think about such things. Now let's take up the challenge to be good and faithful to God and ask the Holy Spirit to guide us. Now this week's activities include drawing and coloring a rainbow and decorating it with all the goodness of God. Oh, and mummies and daddies, don't forget to access Little Faith Steps Facebook page during the week. We'll be posting the worship songs there. Look out for them. It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag CatholicMarsAtHome. 
Let us now listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us in one last minute. Now that you know more about how the Bible readings are chosen, let's look at one sign that we make at every Mass to help us listen to God's Word. Have you noticed that we sit down to listen to the first few readings, but we stand up for the most important one? That's because the Gospel tells us what Jesus did and said. He wasn't speaking just to his friends 2,000 years ago. He's speaking to us here and now. And so we stand up to show him respect. When Father says a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, we reply, Glory to you, O Lord. He marks a cross on the book with his thumb. Then he marks a little cross on his head, his mouth and his heart. We also draw a little cross on our head, our mouth and our heart. The cross reminds us of Jesus. We are asking Jesus to be on our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. And so, having stood up to welcome Jesus and invited him into our hearts, we are ready to hear what he wants to tell us today. Thank you, Auntie Estella. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, Take a moment to be silent and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and learning more about how we are called to be good and faithful to God. There's nothing like giving God our hands and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. 4th July 2021. We offer up this Mass for those who have not accepted the Word of God, yet their eyes may be open to the Spirit. Join us in singing the processional hymn. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And dear friends, coming before the altar of God, we gather as a family, a family of love, a family of forgiveness, and we come together with hearts rejoicing, grateful to all the gifts that God has given us as we have heard in our opening hymn, and we continue to be in God's presence, trusting in His fatherly mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The Spirit came into me and made me stand up. And I heard the Lord speaking to me. He said, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, to the rebels who have turned against me. Till now, they and their ancestors have been in revolt against me. The sons are defiant and obstinate. I am sending you to them to say, the Lord says this, whether they listen or not, they said our rebels shall know there is a prophet among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of St. Paul to the Corinthians. In view of the extraordinary nature of these revelations, to stop me from getting too proud, I was given a thorn in the flesh, an angel of Satan to beat me and stop me from getting too proud. About this thing, I have pleaded with the Lord three times for it to leave me. But he has said, My grace is enough for you. My power is at its best 
in weakness. So I shall be very happy to make my weaknesses my special boast, so that the power of Christ may stay over me. And that is why I am quite content with my weaknesses and with insults, hardships, persecutions, and the agonies I go through for Christ's sake. For it is when I am weak that I am strong. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to his hometown, and his disciples accompanied him. With the coming of the Sabbath, he began teaching in the synagogue, and most of them were astonished when they heard him. They said, Where did the man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been granted him? And these miracles that are worked through him, this is the carpenter, surely, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Jude and Simon. His sisters too, are they not here with us? And they would not accept him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is only despised in his own country, among his own relations and in his own house. And he could work no miracles there though he cured a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, where is Francis? Francis, where are you? Are you hiding again? Do we have to go through this every week where we have to play hide and seek before I can get you out to speak to the children? Children, just be patient. Um, but is he among your soft toys? Maybe just have a look and to see whether it's on your couch or under your couch. Ah, there you are. Under the pulpit again. Why are you always hiding? You think it's very funny. No. Then why are you hiding? Well, I am afraid. Afraid? Why, why are you covered up now? Because I, I don't want to be rejected. Why would you be rejected? Because I want to follow Jesus. And Jesus was rejected, despised. Okay, come on. Let's show your beautiful face. Say hello to the kids. Hello. Right. And what about Jesus being rejected? What is this story about rejection? What are you afraid of? You have many friends. Right? When you say hello, all the kids wave back at you, you know. Yeah, but I want to follow Jesus sincerely. And sometimes when we speak the truth, we will get rejected or hurt. Wow, that's very wise. Hmm. So, what if you get rejected? What are you afraid of if you speak the truth? And especially if the truth comes from God. Well, I don't know. Can I help? Okay. All right. Francis is not in a very good mood today because he's very afraid of being rejected. Do you love him? Yeah? I think send him some love, okay? Let's just wave to him and send him some love. We, we love you. Um, and it is true. It is true. Today our first reading, which I know you have read very, very well and you've reflected about it, and there's all these rebels, um, people who are against the Lord and against what God stands for. But God assures that there is a prophet always among them, even among difficult situations. Prophet among them? Yes. 
to show that God never abandons us. He always is with us and sends somebody to speak his word of encouragement, power, but sometimes word of purification. That means a word of correction. That's what I'm afraid of. I know, because sometimes it's very difficult to correct people, especially in our own families, right? To say something like, um, I think that is not very correct. Maybe you should try doing it another way. And sometimes because of pride, we actually don't accept these words quite well. Yeah, it happens. I know, I know. Okay, stop getting agitated, okay? So, we are called to be prophets nonetheless. Prophets, what does that mean? Is it, I can predict lottery numbers, we can get rich, yay, and then go on a holiday. Yeah, I don't think prophecy is about predicting the future and predicting lottery numbers. Um, prophecy in the Greek, which is prophetes, means to speak on behalf of. Who? Okay, I'm getting to that. So we speak on behalf of God. So a prophet speaks on behalf of God, not that he predicts the future. Of course, sometimes it does happen in the future, whatever the prophet actually speaks. But more importantly, it is to speak God's word. God's word of power, encouragement, like I said, purification, or consolation and love and mercy. Oh, that's nice. Yes. So the prophet sent to Israel was for various reasons, depending on our situation. God knows where we are at in our lives, and God speaks to us where we are at. When we need consolation, He speaks consolation. When we need a little bit of a push, He will give us that push. Yeah, push, push, push. Okay, good. So, we speak on behalf of God, and like you said, sometimes it is not welcomed. Hmm. Yes. And sometimes we speak God's word of love, and that's not welcome. How come? I know. I mean, imagine we have all, we're all looking for love, right? Mm -hmm. And if we think that true love is walking among us, pure love, perfect love is walking among us, we would have recognized it and welcomed it. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. But true love, pure love, perfect love did come and walk among us us on earth. And what happened to him? <gasps> he was crucified, rejected. I know. So we would have thought that if we have pure love among us, we would have recognized and then welcomed this pure love. But Jesus, as God, as pure love, true love, perfect love, walked among us. And what happened? He was despised and rejected even in his own country. Yes. And that's what we hear in our gospel. So, despite of that, are we still willing and courageous enough? Like you said, you want to follow Christ. So you need to speak Christ's word of truth and love. And sometimes that's not welcome. Are you still willing to do it? Hmm. I know it's difficult, right? It's difficult, right? Hmm. I have to do it. I know. You have to do it because your heart belongs to God. And if our heart belongs to God and we've been called by God to belong to Him and to do His will and to do His mission and to build the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God is the reign of love. Very good. So kingdom is not a noun in a sense that it is not a, a thing. Kingdom is the reign of God. It's a verb. It's an action word. That love is always being built and we're called to build love to bring love. And sometimes even in bringing love, we might get rejected, but we still bring love anyway because love will fill us up. Look at our second reading. What about our second reading? Read. Uh, my grace is enough for you. Wow, beautiful reading. My power is at best in weakness. Great. And St. Paul was always preaching on behalf of Christ, bringing Christ to everyone. But he recognized that sometimes he's rejected, but sometimes he has got his own imperfection and weaknesses. And sometimes we are very worried. Worried? Yes. Sometimes we're worried, oh, I'm not perfect enough. I'm not worthy to preach God's word. So I think I better not. But look at Paul. He recognized there is a thorn in his flesh. We don't know what that thorn is. It could be a personal sin. It could be someone who's annoying him all the time or someone who's always rejecting him. But there is something difficult in Paul's life. And he prayed three times. Three times? That's a number of perfection. I know. So he prayed perfectly or totally for God to take away this thorn, but it was not removed. Not removed? Yes. 
the thorn was still in his flesh. And then he recognized, aha, this weakness, this thorn, this imperfection or this annoying person is in my life. But God's grace will overcome this difficulty. Ah, my grace is enough for you. Wow. Yes. So my dear friends, do we believe that God's grace is enough for us? That God's friendship, God's power, God's mercy, God's love is enough to cover our imperfections, our weaknesses, our fears. And so today, let us be open, open to the workings of the Holy Spirit and to allow God to fill us wherever we are in our lives, whether we're afraid, whether we are feeling weak, down, depressed, or maybe we're feeling contented and joyous. Wherever we are, let us continue to allow God to speak to us at this season of our life, at this point of our life, and to allow us to let this love flow through us, to speak God's word of truth, of love, and to be prophets of truth and God's love. And my dear friends, responding to the good news, let us now profess what we believe in. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are told that God's grace is enough for us. Confident in God's promises, we make these prayers of intercession. And our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop William Go, all priests and clergy, that they be strengthened by the example of Jesus, their model and mentor, and remain steadfast in the faith of opposition and rejection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For everyone affected by the COVID-19 worldwide pandemic, whether physically, financially, or emotionally, and for family members kept apart during these times, that times that we continue to hold each other in prayer, trusting and hoping in the Lord's tender love and mercy to put an end to this pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our priests and religious who continue to care and attend to the flock, that the Lord keep them safe and well, and for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and the consecrated life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are struggling mentally, physically, and spiritually in life, that the Lord will be with them, strengthening them through these challenging times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for marriages and families to remain strong and resilient. The couples struggling in their marriage considering a divorce may unite in Christ Jesus and allow him to carry them through their difficulties. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer bullying and intimidation, that Christ, who was belated by his own people, may grant them resilience of mind and peace of heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, we pray for our personal intentions and the intentions who of those who have asked for our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we ask you to continue to watch over the lives of your people. Hear our prayers and grant that we may draw closer to you each day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, 
these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saints Francis and Saint Clare, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to her apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Dear friends, during this time of spiritual communion, let us allow our Lord Jesus to really be present to us. We have many prophets of doom, whether they speak words of rejection and persecution to us, but sometimes we are our own prophets of doom, that we tell ourselves that we are unworthy, that we are never good enough, or we are imperfect to do God's mission. So during this time to be with the Lord, in our silence, let us be confident in God's mercy and that He has called us and chosen us to do His work, which is the work of love and truth. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.